What's the difference between a normal archaeological find and an incredible archaeological find? Keep watching this video and you'll find out. We've been sifting through the world's greatest archaeological discoveries to identify the very best of them, and we've come up with a fantastic collection. From small mysteries to big revelations, this is the archaeological video that's got it all. If we say someone has a golden tongue, we usually mean that they're very good at speaking persuasively. We don't generally mean the phrase to be taken literally, but it seems that someone in Egypt did several thousand years ago. In late 2020, a 2,000-year-old mummy was found at the ancient site of Taposiris Magna and immediately stunned archaeologists because of the presence of the solid gold tongue wedged into its mouth. They still don't know what to make of the find. The current prevailing theory is that the owner of the unusual prosthetic might have lost their real tongue for some reason during their lifetime and was given this golden replacement to ensure that they could speak to the gods on their journey into the afterlife. Any material could have been used for the tongue if that was the case, though, so the choice to use gold must also have had a symbolic meaning that we don't understand. Identifying the occupant of the tomb has thus far proved to be impossible. If we can do that, we might be on our way to getting some answers. Construction workers in San Francisco, California, USA got the shock of a lifetime as they renovated a garage in 2016. When they dug up the concrete floor, they found a tiny lead and bronze coffin buried underneath it. The coffin has windows, and through the windows, they saw the remains of a young girl in such an excellent state of preservation that her skin and long blonde hair are still intact. In her hands, she holds a single red rose clasped over her chest. The house stands on the grounds of the former Oddfellows Cemetery, which was shut down and then built over in 1890, meaning the girl had been buried for at least that long and possibly even longer. The owner of the home nicknamed the girl Miranda and contacted the Garden of Innocence charity in the hope that they'd be able to identify her. That task wasn't easy because of the lack of engravings or inscriptions on the coffin, but they eventually identified her as Edith Cook after studying local obituaries and identifying a living relative for a DNA sample. Edith passed away at the age of two years and ten months in October 1876. The circumstances of her death remain unknown, but at least she finally has a name. Fashions and trends change a lot when it comes to hairstyles. The mullet used to be fashionable during the 1980s, for example, but it generally isn't seen as such today. Thanks to a recent discovery at Amarna, Egypt, we now know how the ancient Egyptians wore their hair 3,300 years ago. Many of the people buried at the site still have all their hair, and the elaborate nature of their hairstyles is surprising. The most notable example is a woman who had 70 extensions arranged in different layers and dyed a vibrant shade of red. That suggests that people were concerned about hiding their gray hair all those years ago, so some things about human vanity never change. Scientists think that henna might have been used to create the dye, but they're not yet 100% sure of that. In one or two cases, long hair was attached to a skull cap, so bald men might have worn wigs. Several of the individuals appear to have artificially curled their hair around their ears, which must also have been a fashion trend of the era. Perhaps Armarna was the place that the perm was invented. The El Peru Huaca archaeological site in Guatemala is one of the most important treasure troves of information about the Maya in all of South America. Among the most fascinating discoveries made at the site are a collection of 1,500 ceramic figurines, some of which are so ornate and detailed that they even have removable helmets. We think of objects like these as children's toys today, but they probably had a far more significant spiritual meaning to the ancient Mayans. A collection of 23 such figurines was found inside a vaulted masonry tomb chamber inside a funerary pyramid which is thought to have been built for a former ruler of Waka. They were carefully arranged in a circle at the time of their discovery. 
One of the figures is a deer with the letter T carved into its surface, identifying the deer as the ruler's spirit companion. Other figures include a warrior queen, dancers, scribes, and another male figure who might represent the king's heir. We might never know the meaning of the arrangement or the function of the figures in it, but it was clearly very significant to whoever put them there. On July 9, 1845, John Gregory wrote a letter to his wife while enjoying a brief stopover in Greenland on his way to take part in an Arctic survey. That was the last time she or anybody else ever heard from him. In April 2021, his remains were finally identified. Gregory was one of almost 130 men under the command of Sir John Franklin when Franklin's two ships, the HMS Terror and the HMS Erebus, became trapped in the Arctic ice. They'd come all the way from England to explore the Northwest Passage through the Canadian Arctic in the hope of establishing a new trade route. When they got stuck in the ice close to King William Island, around 20 men stayed on the ships and perished there. 105 of them abandoned ship and struck out in the hope of finding civilization, but never did. A note found inside a stone cairn on the island confirms that the group were still alive as of April 1848, but their fate after that is unknown. Most of them were buried close to the cairn, including John Gregory. DNA taken from his remains has been matched to his living descendants, finally resolving the age-old family mystery of what happened to him. What was the purpose of these 7,000-year-old stone structures in the Saudi Arabian desert? Are they, as some people believe, evidence of a prehistoric cattle cult? There are more than 1,000 of the structures in the desert. They are known to the locals as mustals, a word which, when translated into English, means rectangles and describes their shape rather than their purpose. The typical shape of a mustal is a rectangle with a platform at each end connected by straight walls at each side. It's theorized that they might once also have had a central chamber, perhaps containing a standing stone. In 2019, a previously undisturbed mustel was discovered, within which the bones of cattle, sheep, goats, and gazelles were found to have been deliberately buried. That's enough evidence for some archaeologists to suggest that the animals might have been sacrificial offerings to the gods. That opinion hasn't gone unchallenged, though. Other experts feel that these might have been holding pens for the animals, which would suggest that the ancient occupants of Saudi Arabia were the first in the world to set up farms. The Megapolis of Teotihuacan is the most famous of all the ancient Mayan structures. Its distinctive architectural style has long been thought to be unique, but a discovery made in early 2021 challenges that assessment. It seems that someone built a mini-replica of Teotihuacan's famous citadel in the city of Tikal. LiDAR data has revealed a structure buried beneath the Mundo Perdido that looks almost identical to the famous pyramid of Teotihuacan. As this discovery is so recent, the site has not yet been excavated. What makes this find all the more astonishing is that Tikal and Teotihuacan are separated by a distance of more than 600 miles. Archaeologists think that the presence of the structure might indicate a friendship or a shared culture between the people of ancient Mexico and ancient Guatemala, one that was probably spoiled when invaders from Teotihuacan took Tikal by force around a century after this newly discovered structure is thought to have been built. Over 100,000 people lived in Teotihuacan during its peak years so it remains possible that some of its former residents might have traveled to other parts of South America and attempted to recreate their former home in their new surroundings. We'll hopefully learn more when the structure is dug up and examined. When Thomas Carlson went out walking in a forest in his home country of Sweden in April 2021, his only intention was to survey the area for his local orienteering club. Discovering Bronze Age treasure was probably the last thing on his mind, but he did it anyway. Thomas found more than 50 objects half buried in the forest floor. Among the collection are fine examples of bracelets, necklaces, and clothespins. He's handed his finds to professional historians and archaeologists, 
who believe them to be in the region of 2,500 years old. They wouldn't be in such excellent condition if they'd spent all that time half in and half out of the ground. So Tomas thinks it's likely they've recently been disturbed by either storms or animals. Tomas was walking close to the small town of Alingzas when he made his discovery. And the town is now experiencing a small gold rush. Archaeologists believe that there may be more discoveries to be made in the area. So there are dozens of them scouring the forests right now in the hope of finding treasures of their own. There are several occasions in your life when you might choose to have a ring custom made for yourself. Weddings and engagements are the most obvious examples. Experts think that this 370-year-old gold ring, discovered on England's Isle of Man by metal detectorist Lee Morgan in early 2021, might have been made for a more unusual purpose. To be more specific, they think it might have been made as a tribute to a beheaded earl. The beautiful gold ring, which has an unusually thin band for its era, is topped by a stunning crystal stone. Beneath the stone, two letters are picked out in gold thread, the letters J and D. Historian Alison Fox, an expert on the English Civil War, believes the initials might be a reference to James Stanley, the seventh Earl of Derby and a prominent supporter of the royalist side of the war. He signed his official correspondence, J. Derby, so JD would be an acceptable abbreviation. Only someone of great wealth, or the family of such a person, would be able to afford such a beautiful piece of jewelry 370 years ago. The fact that it appears to be a mourning ring, consistent with a style that was fashionable during the Stuart era of the 17th and 18th centuries, strengthens the idea that it belonged to a bereaved friend or family member of the unfortunate Earl, who was executed because of his pro-royalist beliefs. The act of ceremonial burial is part of what separates us from animals. It's one of the very oldest human traditions, and as of May 2021, we now know that it dates back even further than we've always imagined it to in Africa. The oldest known human burial site on the African continent has recently been found in the entrance of Panga Yasaida Cave on the South Kenyan coast, and it contains the remains of a child. The infant, who was around three years old at the time of their death, was buried approximately 78,000 years ago. The child was wrapped in a shroud and then entombed in a pit, with their head resting on a pillow. The broken shells of giant African land snails were buried beneath the pit, but the experts aren't yet sure whether they're related to the burial practice or not. As staggering as the age of this burial is, it still isn't the oldest human burial site in the world. Evidence of deliberate human burials that happened 100,000 years ago has been found at the Kafse and Eskul caves in Israel, and there are alleged grave sites in Europe that are 20,000 years older than that. In March 2021, a crew of workmen was hired to carry out land improvements on a farm on the Dingle Peninsula of County Kerry, Ireland. Their work was brought to a sudden halt by the discovery of a previously unknown Bronze Age tomb standing on the land, and inside the tomb, a very mysterious stone. Archaeologists are still working at the scene as of May 2021, but they found enough evidence to support the idea of it being at least 3,000 years old. It's a chamber tomb containing a stone-lined underground structure that could have been used to house the remains of a whole family of people, topped with a large capstone. It's not the capstone that's prompting so much interest, though. It's the presence of a large oval-shaped polished stone inside the tomb, a practice that has never before been noted in Bronze Age burials of this kind. The stone was placed next to the one set of human remains found inside the tomb, which was presumably a deliberate act, but the meaning of the act is unknown. It's a reminder that as much as we think we know a lot about our ancestors, there's still probably more that we don't know than we do. If you know a thing or two about Norse mythology, you'll have heard the myth of Ragnarok before. According to Viking legend, it was to be an end-of-days event that would result in the death of the gods 
and the destruction of the whole world in a ball of flame. Warding off Ragnarok was something of a preoccupation for the God-fearing Vikings, which is why they created this impression of an enormous boat in a volcanic cave and then practically cremated animals as a sacrificial tribute inside it. The cave is in Iceland and was created by the eruption of a volcano roughly 1,100 years ago. That isn't long after the Vikings colonized the country, so they probably made a connection between the two events and presumed they'd angered the gods in some way. As soon as the lava cooled, these ancient settlers entered the cave and made the outline of a Viking boat with the rocks they found inside it. They also left 63 beads, many of which originally came from a rock, and the remains of a mineral called orpiment, which was used to decorate objects and would originally have come from Turkey. Taken all together, it means that the Vikings went to great lengths to perform what presumably would have been a lavish, large-scale ceremony. The world still hasn't been engulfed in a ball of flame, so perhaps the gods were appeased after all. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!